Hello, hello, everyone. We are so excited for another Nonprofit Enthusiast Live. We have the beautiful and wonderful Miss Abigail Ellis with us today. Hey, Abigail. Hi, y'all. <laughs> I know when you come on, we know it's going to be a good, good time. Um, <laughs> <laughs> All right, so if you are tuning in, go ahead and tag a friend into this um, live. We're going to continue the conversation on fundraising and friend raising this month's themes. Um, so go ahead, tag um, some friends into the group. Um, give us a howdy doody. Good morning. How you doing in the chat box if you're here? Um, if you're catching us on replay, go ahead, drop a hashtag replay in the chat box. And as we go throughout the conversation today, feel free. If you have any questions, go ahead and drop them. Um, I'm going to go over to the chat. I see them happy Thursdays. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Yeah, there. Hi, Michelle. Thank you for tuning in. Yes, thank you all so much for tuning in. We're going to get started in a few minutes. We're going to give it a couple more seconds for others to join us, and then we're going to jump right into today's conversation of friend raising and fundraising. So last week, if you did not catch it, um, we have Brittany Tibbins on and we talked about the same topic, fundraising or friend raising. If you missed it, go ahead to our guide section and check that out. Um, you, you can go over to the guide and I'll go ahead and drop that information and see any of our past uh, sessions. I know fundraising and friend raising got to be a hot topic. <laughs> it is. It is. It is. It is. Yes. We've been talking about that all month long. <laughs> intentional, you know, going out. And, we, and let's just go ahead and jump right into it. So, you know, we've been talking all month long about, you know, being intentional when you go out. You know, we, we removed the words networking out of our vocabulary, replaced it with friend raising. Uh, we have Brittany come on last week. Joe came on and talked about friend raising and the art of friend raising, um, which, you know, it's going out and being intentional, you know, about building your network. And, and a lot of the conversation was, you know, pretty much um, building relationships, you know, for yes. your donors, volunteers, or stakeholders, not just, you know, hopping right in there, you know, it's, it's uh, you know, <laughs> hopping right in, just like a relationship. You know, you don't just go in, hey, can you give me some money? You know, it's <laughs> on day, we're going to get to know each other, you know, that whole hey. process. So before we jump into the conversation, Abigail, if you don't mind just telling us about yourself, a little bit about steps. I know many know you, but um, just in case we have some new viewers on. Hey, y'all. I am Abby with Steps Foundation. Our organization is based out of Osceola County. We focus on students and Family. So building connection and relationships with those in the community so that our students and families have an abundance of resources. So what that looks like, we believe in family empowerment, family engagement, youth development, and youth leadership. So we offer two different programs for students to A, learn survival, right? So what is their life going to be like when they graduate? And for some of them, it's life right now because they're living on their own. They're trying to find their way. So how are we helping them with, with connections with the community so that they're able to live abundantly? And then our other program is a, a program that focuses on peer support uh, in the sense of mental health. So students who are suffering from depression or anxiety, how can they get through it while being around a group of peers to help them with coping skills? So that is kind of what we do. But again, it's all about the family unit because our students can't thrive without having a good support system. So we kind of try to be that family and that bridge for them to, to make it through. Love it. So there is a good chance if you're tuning in or wherever you are that you know Abigail. And let me tell you why. Because I believe Abigail has mastered the art of friend raising. I was on a call earlier and they were looking for resources in Osceola and um, West Orange. And I was like, I, I, I just want to say I'm going to connect you to Abigail. I was like, you know Abigail, right? That's pretty much what I said. They're like, yeah, we know Abigail. <laughs> yes, that's Abigail. So more than likely, you even know her or, or, or whichever. And if not, now you do. So 
let's talk about, I think this topic is perfect for you because, <laughs> you know, I feel like you've mastered the art of friend raising, building those relationships, keeping stakeholders engaged. If you could just talk to us a little bit about, about that. <laughs> <laughs> Look, net networking is my thing, y'all. I love, I love being around people. And, and really it's about like-minded people, right? You know, what are our goals? What things do we have in common? Because we're all essentially looking to meet a final goal that typically aligns, right? You know, so for us, it's about building the community and connecting people to resources. And so I have students and families that are looking for a little bit of everything. And I always tell them, I'm not about reinventing the wheel y'all ain't nobody got time for that this is what partnerships are for <laughs> so you learn you learn what people love to do and you learn what people like and when they like what they do they're willing to offer it to help others so perfect example when you talk about friend raising right you know if if you guys have not tuned in and watched our talk tuesdays okay <laughs> students ask for talk tuesdays okay I didn't just come up with it on my own. They were like, hey, we want some, some more things. You know, maybe you could do some lives. And I'm like, who want to sit on live? Y'all, I do not like lives. <laughs> but they asked for it. So we, if you've seen our social media, our students create our social media too. But we often talk about different awarenesses that are related to things that either students or their families are going through. So whether it's, you know, a sickness or an illness, we highlight some of those within the month. Or we're highlighting things that go with some of our uh, topics inside of groups or programs. So our, our Tuesday talks are based on one of those things for the month. So for instance, this month was all about back to school. I solicit people to come and share their expertise. <laughs> and guess what they do, y'all? They love the mission. They love talking to the students. So when they birthday come, guess what they doing? Starting the Facebook fundraiser. For Steps Foundation. <laughs> Friend raising. Yes. yes. Build those connections with people who want to see your organization thrive and grow because they'll always think of you when it's time to give. They share the information with other people to come be those speakers. They share that information with people to come and provide more resources. They share that information with people who want to donate items to give to our kids as incentives. So it, it is, it's all about the network and people believing in what you do. Love it, love it, love it. So pretty much, it sounds like one of the things is like um, your program had a need because your youth requested things and then you were able to um, make the most of that need through pulling in different partners and individuals and keeping them connected through your Talk Tuesday. Yes. <laughs> love it. So what about, because... Um, so tell us some strat. So so talk two phases of strategy to keep your partners engaged throughout the year. And fortunately, and let me tell y'all about Talk Tuesday. So um, Abigail has Talk Tuesday scheduled for the entire 2020 to 2023, y'all. So <laughs> myself, you know, um, she had an event coming up. I couldn't make it. And it's like, oh, we got Talk Tuesdays. Um, go ahead and sign up. I sure did. And, and what I loved is the talk, the topics were so diverse that I was able to find. Um, topics that I connect with and just went ahead and scheduled from 22 <laughs> the entire <laughs> this year and next year all of my talks where, I, where I'll be tuning in so that's an awesome way and the fact that you plan so far ahead it's like a partner can't say no at some point <laughs> like if a whole year you know my calendar are <laughs> kind of I know that's something in there for you <laughs> <laughs> so that is an awesome way to keep partners engaged and it sounds like an easy way to kind of just hop on have those conversations and you're meeting more than just one goal, you know, not just a partnership, but also meeting the needs of your students in, in your group. Um, so talk to us a little bit about um, you going out and physically um, friend raising. What does that look like? So for us, you know, we do things now we're at the community center. And so we're meeting new families, uh, new partners and things like that. And again, like I can... <laughs> Chamber of Commerce, y'all. And, and I know y'all have heard me say it before. <laughs> mm -hmm. I know it can be a hefty fee, especially to new nonprofits. But you guys, if you're looking at getting to know those around you, mm -hmm. the Chamber of Commerce is where it's at. 
And there's so many different types of chamber of commerce that you can engage in. So, I mean, I know Orange County has an abundance. Like they, they even split theirs up depending on what side of the county you live in on. Um, you know, you got the African-American chamber of commerce and don't feel like you have to stay within your county. Right. Network outside of your county because where the money is is where the money is. <laughs> and when people believe in what you do, that they will give, they will donate and they will give their time. They, they will give to you. Um, one of the things that I, I really enjoy is when I go to like the networking after hours. Mm -hmm. This is your chance to kind of talk to people, introduce yourself, let them know what you're about, let them know what you're doing. You don't necessarily have to tell them your need. Once they hear your why, yeah, they'll start asking more questions and they'll figure out your need. <laughs> Or some of them will even be direct and ask you what your need is. So for me, friend raising is all about that. We, we connect, I talk, I listen more than I talk because some of them will tell you exactly what they're willing to give. <laughs> and so you take what they're offering in the moment. They want, sometimes it's a test, right? They want to see what, what are you going to do with what I give you? It may not be exactly what you need right now, but I have it to offer. So what are you going to do with that? accept it with a thank you let them know that you appreciate it because when you show them that you appreciate just the small things they come back with bigger things <laughs> 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 so right now we do we do have uh we connected with the bank and i think that has been a phenomenal relationship and it's not even about monetary it's about them being able to provide our students mm -hmm. with more access to information <laughs> And so with that, now we got somebody from the bank who wants to come into the schools with us, you know, and, and be of help. They want to help mentor kids, you know? So again, it's about building those relationships. Guess what's going to come after that? They're going to be friend raising some money. <laughs> right. So, yeah. you know, start with those relationships. <laughs> I love that you mentioned the Chamber of Commerce because oftentimes as nonprofits, that's a place that we don't look at. Um, and you know, remember a nonprofit is a business. So yes, yeah. you should be engaged in these chambers. And guess what? Because I'm in several chambers as well, and you find there's not that as many nonprofits as you would think. To yeah. me, that's a good thing. Uh, because Same. <laughs> you know, even if there is a good set of nonprofits, you all have very different missions and, and, and programs. So then at the same time, it feels like the competition is not as um as you know it's not as competitive as some other organizations that you go in so yes i'm with you if get engaged at least join one chamber in your area and yes. also do not have high membership fees some of the smaller chambers fees are are um you know low on the lower end and of course the more offerings the more um the membership but also consider when you're looking at that um the memberships the benefits that the chambers have because sometimes you're paying let's say in another area like i'll just for example one of the chambers i'm in they um give dif discounts for um um office supplies like shopping at shopping for office supplies okay so maybe doing that discount will save me and help offset the membership cost you know so sometimes yeah. those benefits are there where it's worth you going ahead and um reallocating your resources to going ahead and um and joining the chambers but yes 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 yep. i love that you said that and if you are not a part of your chamber look it up right now or after this call i should say and and become a part of a chamber at least one in your area ask them questions y'all mm -hmm. don't be afraid to ask each each chamber has its own set of perks right mm -hmm. And just, just like you were saying, like look, you have one that they're offering you guys office supplies. And I think that's huge because mm -hmm. on a business day to day, you know, it costs you a lot. Right. That's operation expense. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, one of our chambers over here offers their meeting space for free. Awesome. So you, you can actually go in and have your meeting. All you have to do is book the room and they're not charging you a thing to do it. Mm -hmm. um, but one of the things that I will say, if you're trying to, if you're going to become a member of the chamber, you've got to be active. Yes. It is not going to be beneficial if you're not going to actually do the work. Right. Okay. Because it, it becomes easy to say, oh, they're not doing nothing for me. 
Mm-hmm. When in a sense, they probably are, but you may not be able to engage. So I, and, and I'm talking to my full-timers because I know a lot of us are still working full-time jobs. Mm-hmm. The chambers has things that they're doing during the day, during your working hours. You're not right. going to be able to make it. So you really have to look at, is it going to be beneficial for you to sign up to be a part of that chamber? So look around, check out multiple chambers to see what their offerings are and what their networking is like. Because you want to make it to the networking events because that's where the people are. And when they get to know you, guess what they're doing, y'all? And, and we're going we gonna to talk like, yes, friend raising, yes. yes. But that networking, they're helping you build more connections because when they hear what you do, they're going to say, oh, you should talk to so-and-so. Yep. Let me connect you to this person. And that person's going to help fill another need. So connect. Yes. Have to make the time to connect. <laughs> I love it. So I think I feel a um a chamber guest coming on. I think on one of our lives we'll invite one of the chamber uh, representatives to come on and talk about the benefits of joining chambers as a whole. Yes. Yes. That's be an awesome conversation to have here. So yeah, I think so too. <laughs> yeah. So okay. So like I mentioned, Abigail. So how do you manage? You mentioned that yes, we have a lot of nonprofits where you know, um, you're working full time and you're running your nonprofit or, you know, there's multiple factors in there where time is an issue. You are the one person doing everything for your organization, which that's a whole nother conversation. Um, but (laughs) do you, um, is there a strategy that you use for like, like, let's say you set your own personal goal or, or what does that look like so that you can balance attending events and fundraising along with being able to, you know, do your other um, <laughs> jobs? What you got? What you got? Uh-oh, what you pulling out of the calendar? Roll, please. Planners, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> Planners, okay? Look, you, you got to make the time, okay? It's easy for us to always say that we don't have time. You have to make the time. If it's something that you want and it's something that, and especially when we're talking about growth, Mm -hmm. okay, because the idea is we want to grow our nonprofit. So I I don't want to sound preachy, y'all, but I mean, really, we have to make the time. (laughs) And so I do, I said, the, the chambers will typically have a calendar and they'll show you what their networking events are for the month, right? Look at that calendar and see where you could spare some time. Even if you just make one in the month, that's one more than you was doing. <laughs> that's one person that you're going to connect with because the premise behind you going to those meetings, connect with at least one person. Exchange that card and don't just exchange the business card, y'all. Don't stop there. Set up a meeting while you're with them. Hey, let's go grab lunch one day so we can sit and talk. I have that one lady in particular that I met at a chamber of commerce. We have lunch every month, <laughs> every month. And every time we're sitting for lunch, we go ahead and schedule the next one. Let's go ahead and put it on the calendar. But it's us getting to know each other personally and us seeing how we can continue to help each other grow. And so she's connecting me with many people. <laughs> Some of them y'all see on our Talk Tuesday. Some of them are doing workshops with our students. She's she's a connector. <laughs> love it, love it. I love connectors. <laughs> Me too. Me too. <laughs> there is, um, yes, we can do our social media, and, and, and that's great. You know, yes, we can do all these other marketing channels, but there's something special about word of mouth marketing, right? Yes. Um, Abigail sends some, if I'm looking for someone, Abigail sends someone my way, do no more betting in my mind a lot of us are like that right if it's a trusted source that's sending us someone over it's like all right <laughs> research over let's go <laughs> um so there's value in that um word of mouth so meaning as you go out you're making those relationships at these chambers and different events and these people are passing your organization on right so they're saying um and i see you ken hey you say i'm taking <laughs> right now that's right ken you know like hey um like kim uh, kim's a good you know they're saying let's say you meet someone out there they um they find someone that does exactly you know going out and they're looking for someone to be able to donate whatever i'll just say uh toiletries too oh kim has an event every month 
they already know they're like selling your organization because of that yep. have with you. And that is one of the best things is through relationships that that word of mouth is just something special. And you can't yep. be locked up <laughs> um, for sure. <laughs> the office you have to get out and meet people and say it again one more time you got to get out people that's right because <laughs> that's right you have to and, and the, the thing about it too reality is the pandemic happened and for introverts like myself um it's easy to just be want to do everything from one location like i don't have to you know it, it's so sad some days i'm like dang just to go up with I'm like, oh my gosh, there's so much energy to get out there. But yes, we have to break out of that. So I'm telling you, I'm also struggling as well. So I'm not just telling you, you know, I'm telling you from a place of I'm battling it as well. We have to get out. So even like tonight, I'm going out to a commerce um, event. Um, so yes, get out, go meet people. That word of mouth marketing is, is, is amazing. To me, it has such a great impact. And, and you even gave an example, Abigail, about just being able to, um, that connector who continuously like pass you on, you know, you're meeting with her for lunch and, you know, she's been able to serve as an advocate um, and, you know, champion of your organization. So that is absolutely amazing. I'm going to talk, so Abigail, can you share the story about the person that when you, um <laughs> something you, you ended up reaching out, this is how serious friend raising is to Abigail. When you reached out to someone, it was like a call center or something. And long story short, you end up trying recruiting the person to volunteer with your organization. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. Okay, so yes, that was Salesforce. So, <laughs> so yes, y'all, you gotta take opportunities when you, when you get them, right? So I'm on the phone with the Salesforce person because I was trying to figure out how we could get Salesforce for free, right? So if y'all don't know about Salesforce, it's amazing. It takes a lot of work though, but it's amazing when you actually get it together. So the, the guy is, is the salesperson for Salesforce and he's talking to me. And I mean, he's just awesome. He's so friendly. He's cool. And so he's talking and I'm like, mm-hmm. And he went, what? I said, so you like volunteering your time? <laughs> and he said, with what? And I said, with anything, I said, we have so many volunteer opportunities. And he started laughing. He's like, you know what? Send me the link. Love it. And he filled it out too, y'all. <laughs> so look, person, y'all. <laughs> you, look, you, you just seize the opportunity when it, when it comes, right? If, if you see potential in somebody or you see, like for him, I saw a person who likes to network. He is a true networker. Sales is perfect for him because he's definitely a networker, but he's not that pushy salesperson that doesn't care. He asked a lot of questions about our organization that I know he didn't have to ask because really Salesforce didn't need all that information. It's just, okay, what we need to sign you up for. But he also took the time to connect me with other people within Salesforce to help us with some of the back end stuff that we had questions on. So he was that go above and beyond person. So I'm like, mm -hmm. you have such great skills that we can absolutely use <laughs> as a volunteer. But he fills it out and he helped do some of the stuff in the background for us. So, I mean, you take those volunteers as you see them, y'all, because it becomes a thing. It, it definitely does. <laughs> so there it is. I'm telling y'all, like the friend raiser, um, Abigail, like <laughs> you see a phone call where the salesperson selling her she sold them to come volunteer for her like every moment she takes to make friends and are very and is very intentional um and has different ways to connect them on um, one of those ways being what she shared earlier with the um talk tuesdays which is um every tuesday for in time she got it planned out for an entire year so at some point you know every, if everyone she meets gets on that calendar that's someone who serves as an advocate on behalf or champion on behalf of her organization because now they're connected to the mission. So I love it, Abigail, and I appreciate you because I know you had a tight schedule today coming on and sharing our the front friend raising tips with us. Any other things that you want to share before we um, end today's call? I want y'all to just go out there and do it. 
don't overthink it because I know a lot of us are overthinkers, right? We sit there and we try to figure out the perfect opportunity. There is no perfect opportunity, y'all. The perfect opportunity is the opportunity that you take. <laughs> so just do it. So go out, like she said, be intentional with who you are encountering. If you see that they have something that your organization needs, pull them in. <laughs> Because they're going to give you more than just what you need. But you got to pull them in. So go out there, make those friends, make it happen. Another good thing about our Talk Tuesday is it's not just about what you guys are able to provide to our students. And I love doing it with other nonprofits because that is a chance for you to tell our community who you are and what you do. <laughs> because we know it's hard for people to know what some of our nonprofits do because people don't allow us the space to share it, right? So here's a space for you to share it. So I will drop the link to the form in the, in the chat. <laughs> so you guys can feel free to come on and share it because at the end of the day, I, again, your organization is a resource for our kids. We are one big community, y'all. The counties don't separate us that much, okay? <laughs> and I got students in Orange and Osceola County. So That's right. they yeah. looking for you too. <laughs> us neither no matter what state you're in either you could that too here, um the link um if you all have an opportunity definitely check out the link sign up for a tech tuesday if you can't do it this year guess the 2023 calendar is up there go ahead and sign up for next year's um tech tuesday so abigail will be sharing that link uh with us so we got some work y'all here's homework you know we like to there's a lot of tips shared mm -hmm. Um, if you're not a part of the chamber chamber of commerce, start you know exploring your chamber in your area. Um, the other one being, you know, when you go out to the event, at least meet one person and schedule a meeting. Don't just leave it right there. Just you know, schedule a meeting to um, re-engage with that person, right? So our homework is for the next month. So we're starting a new month next month. For the next month, let's let's get out and network. Let's go out there. So let's if you attend um let's double what you do if you attend zero events a month attend at least one let's start there um if you attend one event let's do two you know let's double whatever you're doing in networking let's try doubling and get it for, for the next month and when you're going out there meeting at least one person which i'm sure you're going to meet more connecting with them scheduling meeting um and come back and tell us how that goes so that's homework and we thank you all so much for tuning in um, and next week, we'll be starting a new topic of community building. So make sure that you stay tuned for next month's um, topic. Abigail, it's always amazing when you join us. So thank you, thank you, thank you so much. For thank you for us. having me. <laughs> All right. Bye, everyone. Bye, y'all.